Till now, we have been considering vibration of idealized systems in the form of lump parametric bodies or system, where the inertia, the restoration, dissipation, they are all segregated and they are considered to be located in individual bodies. However, in real life, the bodies are all continuous elastic bodies. And I think lastly, what we would like to do to develop or to discuss something about the vibration of such continuous systems or elastic bodies. The first thing we have to keep in mind when we discuss the vibration of continuous systems or elastic bodies, that such bodies constitute infinite number of material points or particles. And the complete description of the configuration of the elastic body under consideration at any instant of time will require infinite number of coordinates. And therefore, we may also say that such systems, continuous systems or elastic bodies possess infinite degrees of freedom. So, in one sense, we may also consider elastic bodies to be one extreme situation of multi degree freedom system only when that the multi becomes infinite. So, the real life system they constitute of predominantly these kinds of elastic bodies in the form of a plate or a beam or a column or a shaft or a bar, whatever, or even a rigid body. What we will do, we will try to consider in this limited time and scope only few idealized bodies in the form of uniform bars, uniform shaft and uniform beam, plates and other kinds of higher level objects or complicated bodies we will avoid discussing. Our objective will be dominantly to discuss the ways and means by which such systems can be analyzed and to get some uh, results of some simple cases. So, simple objects or simple geometry will be Now, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by a bar object like this of any cross section? Cross section can be anything, only thing it has to be uniform and the body has to be prismatic, that means it remains uniform everywhere. So, if we consider a particular plane here. This plane will oscillate like this. And this motion can be described as a function of the position of this plane in a coordinate system. That means, this distance is x and time because position of the plane in its longitudinal vibration is continuously changing with time. So, the displacement of the plane from its equilibrium position which is shown in this line will be a function of x that is where this plane is located and at what time or what instant we are considering. Say for example, this may be the plane here may have 
a vibration which is somewhat different. Maybe it vibrates with this magnitude. So, when you plot the amount of deformation or magnitude of deformation, so you will find it may be a function of this may be total length of the bar. So, therefore, what is happening that this bar all particles of course, we have to consider only one dimensional motion that means, all particles in a plane for which x is same also will have identical motion that means, this will have this, this will that. So, therefore, the motion is purely a function of x coordinate and of course, the instant when its location is will cancel. So, therefore, what is happening that the amplitude of motion of every plane depends where this plane is located. This kind of vibration that means, the motion or the displacement of the particles or the plane are along the length of the object like this. This kind of vibration or oscillation is called longitudinal oscillation. So, this is the kind of motion we will have in case of longitudinal oscillation of a bar, uniform prismatic bar. Next possibility is uniform shaft. And so, now any plane here which is at a distance x from the origin here each particle motion will not be in this direction, but in a direction that means which this, this plane circular plane will only rotate about its center which is here and this kind of motion it will be purely angular motion about its equilibrium position and we may consider this to be theta which will be again a function of x and instant when we are considering. So, here the whole thing is moving in a direction which is perpendicular to this longitudinal axis and that is called torsional motion or angular rotation. And here also you will find that the amplitude of torsional oscillation of each plane depends on the location where it is located and amplitude will be a function of that. And actual value of theta at any instant will also depend on t. This kind of motion is called And finally, if you have a body like this, we fix a coordinate system in this. Now, if we take up an element in this or a plane in this, then each particle here, all the particles oscillate in a direction which is perpendicular to this. In the transverse direction, this also you may say if 
he may get confused with velocity. Let us use some other term. This statement again. Let us. So again, now you see here the motion was along this x longitudinal direction. Here it is perpendicular to that in the transverse direction, and this particular mode of the system is considered to be beam mode when the load, etc., all the movements are in the lateral transverse direction. And again, here the magnitude of transverse oscillation amplitude depends on the position of this point, and the actual halo of the displacement depends also on the time. And this kind of is called transverse So these are the three types of vibrations which we will discuss and what we will discuss here will be always a free vibration. That means our objective will be predominantly to figure out or find out the natural frequencies and mode shapes whenever possible. Secondly, we have to also keep in mind few things. That means this bar we are considering in this case is uniform and prismatic. The shaft we are considering is uniform straight and also circular and in case of beam it is again a beam with uniform cross section and uniform. So therefore the uniform bar, uniform shaft and uniform beam we will investigate. We will also keep in mind that all these systems there will be certain amount of damping involved but we will ignore the damping and finally that all the cases we will consider the magnitude of vibration is small compared to the dimensions of the object. So it always we consider small oscillation. So therefore we start our uh, discussion with the first type of okay, case that means longitudinal vibration of a bar. We have noted the point uniform small oscillation free oscillation and undamped. So first case is the longitudinal vibration of a uniform prismatic bar. This is our uniform prismatic bar. Whatever may be the cross section, it is uniform. And we now fix up a coordinate system attached to the body with one end as the origin. Then we consider what we do, the technique of solving these kinds of problems will be we identify a, an element at a, any location, general location at x, and find out what will be the dynamics of the element which is valid at any instant at any location. Once we find out the generalized equation of motion of a generalized element of the body that represents the motion characteristics of the whole system. So we identify an element. Remember this element is infinitesimally small. This is C, this point is Q. This point is R, this point is 
the location of this plane left end of the plane is at x and thickness of the element is E. It is infinitesimally small. This is the equilibrium position. Now, at instant of time t, each plane is oscillating. So, at instant of time t, so let us consider this to be the location of the and similarly r prime s prime be the plane r s at time t and p prime q prime is the plane p q at time t. So, the displacement this is u at x at time t. So, displacement of the other plane will be what? It will be u into x t plus. Now, if the displacement u is a, a function of x, then displacement at x plus dx will be what? It will be displacement at x, suppose here we are finding the displacement here and displacement here which is dx. So, it will be displacement here plus the extra amount of displacement which is nothing but the rate at which the displacement changes with x into that means that rate into this will give this extra. So, in mathematical term what we write is du d x. So, displacement at location x is u x u. So, displacement at location x plus d x is u plus rate at which the displacement changes with x into the extra position or distance. So, the element now in this general condition this is the element at time t. How much is now the length of the element? This length of the element is original d x of the element plus how much it has gone on this side that is u plus del u del x d x that has gone this side minus this much. So, that is equal to original length of the element x plus del u del x into So, originally the element had a length d x, now the element has length this one. So, what will be the strain? Strain of this element E is equal to the final length minus original length which is this one divided by the original length d x. So, you can see. So, strain in the element at instant of time t is given by this one. We now know that obviously, Zenth will be subjected to tensile stress, it is a one dimensional case. So, let the stress at this side be by x at time t, it is also a function of time t. 
then space here will be whatever stress is acting on this side plus the rate at which the stress is changing with location but any function continuous function if you know the value at x then value at x plus dx is generally it is generally suitable. We have done it for displacement, we can do it for stress, we can do it for anything, temperature, velocity, axis, everything. Now, so therefore, the overall stress this is subjected to is sigma x on this side and sigma x plus an infinitesimally small quantity on this side. So, we may consider that it is predominantly subjected to a stress of sigma x. So, if the stress is sigma x and the strain is epsilon, then what is the relation? We know that stress by strain is equal to E. So, this will give us that sigma will be equal to E into del u del x. So, if you now consider the free body diagram of the element at any instant of time, what is the force acting on this side? Cross sectional area A into sigma and total force in this side is cross sectional area A into sigma plus del sigma del x dx. So, there is a resultant force in the positive x direction. that is equal to force in this direction minus force in the opposite direction. So, what it remains is A into Now, we have this relation here. We have now expressed stress in terms of displacement quantities and material properties. So, if you substitute it here, so this is equal to A into E into B2 U L x square using this relation substituting sigma here. Now, this is the resultant force acting on the element. What is the now motion characteristics or kinematics of the element if you see? This end of the element is having an instantaneous position u. What will be the instantaneous velocity of this end? It will be del u del t. Remember, now it will be a function of time which is important to find out the kinematics. So, if the displacement is u, so the velocity will be del u del t and acceleration will be del to u del t square. This side also will be same plus an infinitesimally extra change because of this infinitesimally small distance d s. Overall, we may consider that the acceleration of the element is del to u del t square plus a higher order infinitesimal term. That infinitesimal term we ignore because it is higher order. Now, let us apply Newton's law. 
Newton second law says this mass of the element which is is volume of the element that is cross sectional area A into length this is the volume of the element and multiplied by the rho that is density of the material that is the mass of the element. So, mass of the element into acceleration of the element must be equal to resultant force. So, Newton's second law when applied to this what you get? We get mass of the element A rho into d x into acceleration of the element this is the acceleration of the element must be equal to total force in the element which is A into E So, finally, what we get or So, this is the equation of motion of a general element anywhere in the bar. So, therefore, since this is valid for the whole beam, so this is the equation of motion of the bar. Now, of course, you have to see how we consider the solution of this. This is known as the wave equation. longitudinal wave equation, where the velocity of longitudinal wave is c and this is nothing but so it is in the standard wave equation form del to u del t square is equal to c square into del to u del x. Next we consider the vibration of the longitudinal vibration of the path. So, now let us consider longitudinal vibration, but as I mentioned that we are considering free vibration and also you have to keep in mind we are considering natural mode oscillation because our objective is to find out the natural frequency. So, for a natural mode oscillation all the particles must move or oscillate with the same frequency omega as we have done in case of multi degree freedom system here also it is the same thing that each and every plane is vibrating with the same frequency omega and depending on their location they are either in phase or opposite phase. So, therefore, each one vibration can be represented by its amplitude multiplied by cosine omega to sine of theta. So, therefore, this displacement for natural mode oscillation with a frequency omega all displacement which are harmonic functions of time will have same frequency. So, therefore, we can write that the displacement u x t can be represented by an amplitude of vibration which is a function of x only into cosine which means that the amplitude of motion is dependent on x 
which is a function of x only and since it remains same it does not change with time. So, only thing what is changing with time is the, uh, the, the uh, which is represented by the harmonic function of time, but the amplitude does not change. That means, what we are doing we are representing the displacement function which is dependent on position and time as a product of two functions which one of them is a function of x only other one is a function of time only. With this understanding which is valid everywhere for multi degree freedom system, so it will be exactly valid in case of infinite degree freedom system also. Now, if we substitute this in the equation, what we get. Now, the first time we are differentiating with time only, it is a partial differentiation. So, x remains outside minus and second derivative of this becomes omega square is equal to C square and this uh, that is also partial differentiation, but with x. So, it will be differentiation of this function x with x only into now since it is a function of x only differentiation with respect to x we need not be partial or we write this equation in this form so therefore we get an equation or the amplitude of every particular every point every plane. Solution of this we know solving what we know we did not do it again we know that x x will be equal to q 1 cosine omega by t x plus e 2 sin omega by this is the general solution of the second order equation. We have already solved it number of times, so we know it. Now, here this c 1 and c 2 these two unknown quantities and omega we will see depend on the boundary condition. So, for finding out these quantities, we have to next take up each and uh, every uh, different case. Therefore, let us consider the boundary condition. Now, boundary conditions can be of this type, say if the boundary is fixed, it means what x equal to 0 that means the displacement of that particular point which is fixed is 0 because that is what is the definition of fixed thing. And so, even if I multiply by cosine omega t at all times it remains fixed free. What is the meaning of free? Free means there is no force acting on it if there is no force acting on it means no stress is acting on it that means sigma is 0. If sigma is 0 then it means del u del x is 0. 
and del u del x is 0 at all times and if we use u as a function product of capital X into cosine omega t, it will be del dx dx is 0. all time that means multiplied by cosine omega t term also. So, this condition has to be satisfied if it is free that means it will be stress free all the time and x will have to be 0 if it is fixed. These are the two simple geometric boundary conditions. Sometimes there can be other types of boundary condition maybe you attach a heavy load here. So, what happened the whole thing is oscillating along with that heavy load then this end will not be force free it will be subjected to the if you apply the Alembert principle subjected to the inertia force of the block which is attached there. So, that has to be calculated and such problems we will take up as examples. This we have to keep in mind that the primarily the conditions which can be subjected to or can be imposed on this beam bar is either x is equal to 0 or dx dx is equal to 0. So, let us take up cases one by one. So, now let us pick up cases one by one. First case, a free, free bar. Free, free bar means a bar of length L both ends are free. The material property tells its modulus of elasticity is E and density is rho. So, solve the longitudinal vibration problem and find out the natural frequency. Remember this all the time that for any free vibration problem, it is the natural frequency which can be uniquely determined, but the amplitudes cannot be determined. It depends on the initial condition how you start. And our objective is primarily to find out this. Now, so therefore, if we take, you know that vibration will be given by u x t is nothing but a function of x into cosine omega t for natural mode oscillation. And for x we have dx where E is equal to square root of E by rho, which you know those who have to remember from physics that for this longitudinal wave equation this T is E is the velocity of propagation of any wave. Now, if we apply what are the boundary conditions? Boundary conditions at if it is at x equal to 0, we know it is free that is dx dx equal to 0 at x equal to L again dx dx. So, both ends are free. Now, if you apply x equal to 0 
dx dx is equal to minus omega by c c1 and this is 0 and that is 0 mean c1 is 0 it has to be because dx dx at x equal to 0 is omega by c into c1 omega is not 0 c cannot be 0 so capital c1 has to be for the second boundary condition if you apply what you find omega by c c2 sin omega l by c that is the second boundary condition at x is equal to l. Now c2 cannot be 0 if both c1 and c2 are 0 then there is no vibration frankly speaking x is equal to 0 if x is equal to 0 there is no vibration so that is not a solution omega is not 0 c is not 0 so the only possibility for which a vibration may exist but these conditions are satisfied is sin omega l by c is 0 so that tells us that sin omega l by c has to be or that tells us that omega by l by c has to be integer multiple of pi, pi equal to 1, 2, 3 up to So, therefore, we find out that this will be possible to satisfy the equation etcetera if and only if the natural frequencies are according to i i e by l so there are infinite number of frequencies for which this condition is satisfied and that is called the natural frequency so these are the natural frequencies C of course is nothing but square root of u by rho. So you can write separately the natural frequency of the ith mode is equal to i i by l square root of e by. And there are infinite number of natural frequency because it has infinite number of degrees of freedom. But the first natural frequency is pi by l into square root of e by rho the mode if you want to find out mode means x this is the mode shape so mode shape if you want to find out first mode as a function of x will be mode is nothing but the pattern of the formation that you have seen in case of finite lump bodies it used to be a ratio between the finite amplitude but for a elastic body it will be the continuous function x as a function of x so this will be c2 sin omega by c now omega omega by c is i pi into x by so it will be the ith mode. So therefore, if we want to plot the mode shape, now remember the displacement is not in that direction. It is only I am graphically plotting displacement also in this direction of x. So one has to be careful of not being confused that the actual displacement in this direction no but the first mode says it will be sin pi x by l C2 will be 0 
and zero. And the mode shape will be C1, C2 is 0, so it will be simply C1 cosine i pi Now it matches. So, we start from here, this will be the first mode. Second period, second mode will be Third mode will be so therefore we find that the first, second, third mode in all the cases the boundary conditions have to be satisfied and it is given by this function. But as you will see later that mode shape cannot be found out analytically in most of the cases elastic body vibration, we will see that at a later. If the object or the beam or bar is fixed at one end and free at the other end, then what will be the case? That is the second example. Case 2, So now at one end it is fixed to a wall, other end is free. So boundary conditions will be at x equal to 0, x will be equal to 0, at x equal to L, now we know that x a is C1 cosine and we already know this, we should not make the same mistake. When we use the boundary condition for x is equal to 0, this is equal to 0. So, this will give us C1 equal to. Now, for x is equal to L, we have to use this. That means, this is 0 when you substitute x is equal to L. Now, C1 is already 0, so therefore, this is only this part which is left. So, this will give us omega by C, C2 cosine omega by C L. Now, the same logic, we cannot have C2 equal to 0, then there is no vibration. Omega cannot be 0, C cannot be 0. Only possible situation which is permitted is cosine omega L by C. And we can say, that omega i will be in this case this will be 0 that means integer multiple of omega l by c will have to be integer multiple of i by 2 it will be i Two i minus one by two where i varies from one to the up to 
So, I is equal to 1, this is pi c by 2 L, that means omega L by c will be pi by 2, for I by I is equal to 2, this will be 3 pi by 2 and so on. So, the natural frequency of the ith mode with one end fixed and one other end free is given by 2 i minus 1 by 2 into pi by L square root of So, that will be the fixed free case for natural frequency and the mode shape if you want to plot the mode shape will be given by q1 is 0, it is c2, sin omega pi c is So, x is equal to 0, it will be always 0 and x is equal to L, it will be again quantity which is integer multiple of pi by 2 that means it will be either plus 1 or minus 1. So, the first mode will be something like this. Second mode will be like this, hard mode, and so on. Again, to remind you that this kind of very analytical closed form solution for the mode shape is possible only in some limited cases. So, I think you can see and we can find out the uh, natural frequencies in the other types of uh, boundary conditions. That means, we can make both ends fixed. One thing only is what in, uh, noticing here that the natu first natural frequency of this one end fixed, one end free is how much? This is free. And both ends free first natural frequency was it can be physically justified that why it is just half in case of fixed free. The reason is this you could imagine a free free case like this. If you take a free free beam, now remember that the if we take a uniform beam of length 2 L, its natural frequency will be same. Why? Because the midpoint of this, if it is a free vibration, midpoint which is representing the center of mass of the beam, that cannot shift position. So, therefore, it is obvious that for free oscillation, the midpoint of the uniform bar will remain fixed. So, therefore, whether you fix it like this or you make a bar of length 2 L and allow it to vibrate freely, this point will remain fixed. So, the motion of this half and this they are same. So, therefore, the natural frequency of this is nothing but the natural frequency first mode of a bar of length 2 L and so therefore, you can see it is just half. So, that is the physical justification. 
So, we will pick up other types of simple bodies like shaft in the next presentation.